Welcome to the bold analysis. Immediately, Silvanus Osoro delivered William Ruto's message to the Kipsegist nation in Bomet. Osoro was chased and had to be whisked away by his security because of chaos in Bomet Stadium. In this podcast, let me take you down to the Bomet drama and how the whole thing unraveled. Chepsi Kor Lynette Toto, the Bomet women rep, was launching some um, GAF projects that had brought together a group, different groups of women in Bomet Stadium. And because she's just a politician, that event was actually a political event. And she invited all the leaders from Bomet and the governor, the senator, and her guest of honor was Silvanus Osoro, the chief whip in the National Assembly, the UDA party chief whip. So this is the photo of Toto arriving there. And in her convoy, it was Toto, the governor, and uh, Joyce Correr amongst other leaders. And when they arrived at the stadium, the event was underway. And after some, probably like 30 minutes later, Senator, the, the, the Bomet Senator arrived in the venue. And what you can see, like this video you can see here is the video of his chopper arriving in the same venue. So immediately arrived there, some group, group, groups, group of youth went, welcomed him and became, and he actually came and attended the event. So Sigi, uh, the senator, is, uh, is Wakili and is one of the William Ruto's closest confidants in Bomet. And he was also part of the team that was picked to be in the bipartisan talks. So if you want to know some of the few people that William Ruto uh, has the ear of William Ruto in Bumet, then that is Senator uh, Wakili Segei. Uh, it is not yet clear whether Segei was also eyeing the governorship position, but um, that is yet to be revealed. So after he arrived, when he arrived at the venue, I want you to look at, I've just followed that event and this photo is the sitting arrangement. I've looked at that sitting arrangement because whoever's there is the governor, then you can see Sigei and Silvanus Osoro. So they were seated and in fact, um, no one will see any sort of tension, that maybe there's any tension that was going on there. So everything was just fine and they were comfortable. So all the other speakers uh, gave their speeches, they spoke, then, before governor could speak, of course, our uh, sorry was not actually the guest of honor, but one of the person from uh, the leaders outside Bomet was invited there. And Osoro picked the microphone and made a 30 minutes, not a 30, a 20 minute speech, speaking about everything and about shaoling. And she made, he made a statement that was very intentional. And this is what Osoro said. Wakati huu si wakati wa kutengeneza maneno ya kingpin katika kila region. Kila region saa hii Kenya mzima tuko na kingpin mmoja anaitwa William Samoei Ruto. Hatuna kingpin ya areas. Hatuna kingpin ya areas. Immediately it came, actually he finished speaking about it, things went south. And some wild violence broke out from the audience. A section of the youth, and if you realize throughout, um, throughout Osoro's speech, they were a bit rowdy. But what is then explained is that a group of some youth then thronged, uh, came out, jumped to the podium, 
and Osoro had to be whisked away amongst other leaders plus the governor and even the Line Toto. So even Line Toto did not speak, did not make any speech in that event. So he had to be whisked away and he went. Now later on, I, 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 I sampled some videos because that group was a group of women. It was, it was that event for some women. And these videos I wanted to listen to are how the women were reacting, and just explaining what exactly happened. And a group of uh, youths there that are trying to apportion blame on some leaders. But this is after things happened because the event was cut short. It ended like prematurely and, and leaders now had to vanish. Then those who started there started giving accounts of what exactly had happened. Osoro mahali popoto lupundu yangu. Umeguja bomek kutufuruka. Na tunajua siyo wewe. Wewe ni mouthpiece ya mtu ambaye likutuma. Uguja mahala hapa. Uze meo mamba ambaye umesema. Na kwa ufupi tunakuambia tu. Ndugu yetu Osoro. Atuna shida na wewe. William ni mtu wetu. Wewe ni mtu wetu. Shida tu ni akili yako na manene yako ambaye uliwekewa. Hiyo ndiyo ilileta shida. Hapa bomek. Kuzo. <laughs> Gavana wa Jimbo hili, Mheshimiwa Barjo, alikuwa mstari wa mbele kumsaidia huyu woman rep. Yeye alitoa vitu zake kusema watu wa Bomet wapate, akasema huyu 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 Mheshimiwa Toto asaidiwe, akakuja na yeye, akaketi na yeye. Ila tu wakati wakili alifika tu na ndeke. Shida ikaanza na msukusuko katika kiwanja. Yeah. Wakati huu, shukuru Mungu, maana ametujali kutoka asubuhi mpaka wakati huu. Kusema ukweli tulikuwa vizuri. Mkutano ilianza vizuri, tuliendelea vizuri kabisa, lakini kufikia wakati, tumefikia katikati wa mkutano, atujui kilitokea nini, tulistukia kuna ndege ilishuka, vijana wakashuka na makelele ya kansa. Bada hayo makelele, tulipigwa, tumechapwa, atujui ni nini inaendelea, atujui hii ungomvi natogea, ni senator, ni nominate temsi ye, ni governor ama ni nane. Lakini tafadhali tungeomba kama wamama mungetuachia tumaliza mkutano wetu ya wamama Tumwenda mpambane kama wanaume tumepigwa hatuna mwili hatuna chochote simu kwanza nimeipiwa kipeti changu kimepotea sina pesa fiatu imekatika sijui sasa nitapita nini hadi huko saidia chepalungu serikali tafadhali Saidia wa mama. Saidia. Saidia wa mama. 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 So that, that points the picture that someone was probably behind it. But two people did not speak. Barchok, the senator, and uh, even Linnet. However, the whole what Osoro said, back to what Osoro said, Osoro said about it is not time for politics of transition or not time for politics of succession. That is the same thing that even Morkomen was telling Cherelge in Nandi just the day before uh, yesterday. Morkomen was also telling Cherelge that it's not time for looking for who is going to be a brutal successor. It is time to deliver. And I don't know why. People would, things don't just happen in a crowd, things don't just happen, they are normally mobilized. Why someone will feel uncomfortable with the message from Osoro that it is not time for uh, succession politics? And then, that makes me ask, then it brings me to a question. Amongst all those leaders who are there, who has been angling for succession? Then, that is Hilary Barcho, who even recently, slammed Murkomen and calling Murkomen that he does not recognize Murkomen and the only person he recognizes is William Samoy Ruto and you should get that soundbite. <laughs> I'm a 
So you can that is that can show you what exactly Osoro was dealing with. And I think I normally say that as leaders, sometimes you need to avoid some shenanigans. <laughs> you know, like if you dear, you know, Osoro has been a mouthpiece for the president. When William Ruto wanted to tell Rigadi Gashagwa to stop about the hustle narrative, he's the first person that was sent to Sema, he mambo ya hustle narrative sasa lazima yishe. Lazima tukue pamoja, akona mambo kumba, no hatla, hii mambo ya, ya shareholding lazima yishe. The person who was sent to deliver that message was Silvano Sosoro. Today, he's again be used to deliver a message in Bomet and it did not go on well with him. So, you know, <laughs> I just, I just analyzed the, the video before this one that there was something going on there and they must be very careful. Now what I am wondering and uh, what, what I don't, what, what I'm really, what should worry President Ruto here is, why is it that just one year after his presidency, his own backyard is already talking on how to replace him? Because how do you succeed? How do you succeed William Ruto and he's still in power? And I think this is what should worry him. But what's, what's the urgency? What's the clamor for succession, especially in, uh, in Rift Valley? What has brought that clamor? And let me tell you, the reason, one of the things that you cannot run away from that you can clearly attribute to this is the transition in Mount Kenya. In Mount Kenya, there are those who want to be the kingpins there. And the Mount Kenya kingpin is already strategizing on how he can take over from William Ruto. So you know, and again, Ruto himself is known, those around him know very well that uh, he started campaigning, strategizing for his presidency in 2014. In 2014, he was in charge of all the tenders and consolidating resources and here and there. So even there, his own students are doing what he did against Uhuru Kenyatta. Immediately got, they got presidents in 2014, he started skipping against, skimming on how to dethrone Uhuru, how can dethrone Uhuru Kenyatta in 2032. That is, and these leaders you have now, those who have presidential ambitions, what they are doing now is to look at what is coming. And so, he's the person that has brought it. Another reason why there is clamor for that transition is because campaigns did not end. And in this country, you may even confuse whether there is some election coming the next few months. Because the president has stopped, has refused to stop campaigning, even those who are now around him are campaigning. And that is why those campaigns are actually going on. 
Now, um, what am I saying? First of all, must trade very careful, by the way. On a stream, so this one you must trade very careful. But what exactly am I seeing in that Bomet drama? The way William Ruto orchestrated Mount Kenya Division at Uhuru Kenyatta exit, that division is rocking his back end, and at his exit, he will not have a voice. Just the same way he ensured that Mount Kenya had to defy Uhuru Kenyatta. It is the same same dose that is getting. I don't know why there will be chaos if someone has said that it is not time for succession. I don't know why. What am I saying? There is already division. That those who may, and, and those caucuses have started building, Nandi, Kipsikis, these, those caucuses have started building. So, and that is what is happening. And that is what is coming. That that division might come back. Number two, that succession, if not the succession talk in the Rift Valley, if not managed carefully, it can lead to some vote apathy. Yes. When it is not managed, camps will start emerging. And with these camps emerging, it might become too late for president to consolidate. And it can eat into the Rift Valley basket. Number three, I think Osoro must void stray assignments. If it is President Ruto sending you to tell these people, Ruto has Sudi, yes, who comes from that place. He's very vocal. Ruto has Johanna Ngenu, who comes from that place. Ruto has Narok governor. Ruto has Dr. Mutai, the Kerecho governor. So I don't think you, now that you come from another place, to, to be seen as if di dictating the politics of another region, I think is biting more than what you can chew. On this one, I think Osoro should just keep off. Thank you. I've been, I've been here for the last uh, a few, um, I, I think I spent my night here. And it's quite amazing. It's quite an amazing, amazing place. So I want to show you the other spaces, but this is literally what that living room looks like. You really love it. So let's go. Now, um, the other place I want you to see, this is the dispenser. Yeah, this is the dispenser. And they have Wi-Fi. So you should not even worry about your internet and I've used it. It's quite very fast. So you can be able to run your errands if you want to work online, you want to just keep up. And you also want to watch the bold podcast, you'll be sure you'll be able to get that. So on this end is now double bed. This looks amazingly beautiful. I'm telling you, <laughs> this is this is good. You know, this is a place that um, sometimes Kwabaisha <laughs> Pia you just here. You get used to this one. It's quite, it's quite good space. And then I've realized by that guys, uh, the cost is a bit uh, 